If you've been following my channel for a bit, then you've probably noticed that I have a bit of an obsession with low light. Astrophotography, aurora, lightning, sprites, comets, and meteor showers. About two years ago, I nearly purchased a Sony a7S II, which is a consumer grade camera, especially known for its low light capabilities. It would have replaced my T3i, which temporarily bit the dust, but I've been historically a Canon guy, so I purchased this Canon 6D Mark II, which is my primary time-lapse camera, and a Sony RX10 Mark IV, which I've used for everything else video. I made this decision thinking that Sony would release a new a7S model soon, and while that did take quite a while, it was finally announced in the summer of 2020. And for four long months, I waited for my Sony a7S III to arrive. It finally did, just in time for my birthday and just ahead of the Gemini meteor shower. So to put this camera to the test, I took it to one of the darkest places in the United States, the Big Bend of Texas. To start, I'm gonna demonstrate some meteor captures in several different modes. Next, some Astro style vlogging, playing with sunset and twilight transitions. And finally, some speed run astrophotography, where every image has just five minutes of integration time. How good or bad will that look and how does it compare? And I think you'll be both impressed and also excited for this channel's future and the kind of content that I'll be bringing to you later on. There are hundreds of videos on YouTube right now touting this camera's unique or OP features and demonstrating some of its capabilities. I'm primarily just focusing on the low light performance here. For starters, even the weakest meteors don't slip by the A7S III's detector. Also, I've labeled each scene with the settings, modes, and equipment used. It's even better if there's a nice classic geminid fireball. Oh, yes! Something special about Big Bend, not only is it dark, there's no air traffic. So every streak you see in these S and Q time lapses is a geminid meteor, not planes. And very few satellites either, as this is in the middle of the night. And here we are, right at the peak of the Geminid meteor shower. S and Q mode makes meteor shower time lapses an absolute breeze, and the results are wonderful compared to the efforts I've made in the past. But even more impressive for these high ISO, one frame per second time lapses, is that it had no issue capturing meteor smoke. And let me point out, I didn't notice these naked eye. Seeing these in post sort of blew me away, and I didn't expect to capture so many smoke trails. Usually, this is reserved for the brightest meteors, yet the A7S III seemed to capture meteor smoke on even just run-of-the-mill meteors. So, one frames per second videos of meteors is pretty cool, but how about 120 frames per second video and converting to slow motion? Can it do that? Yup, no sweat. Oh, well that was one heck of a drive. I made it though. <laughs> just in time. So, how about astro vlogging? How does that look? Campfire level lighting? Check. At 120 frames per second? Check. Handheld constellation videos? Check. Fluid sunset transitions? Yeah, got it. Now here I accidentally underexposed these shots, so this part could have actually looked a lot better. But thanks to 10 bits of color gamut, while a bit noisy, I can still rescue a shot like this. Test. I'm just vlogging with the light of dusk. I mean, it's, I wouldn't even call it, it's twilight. It's astronomical twilight. You can see most stars in the sky, and that's about it. You can see the little faint glow. I mean, there's a couple little dots right here, up above the horizon, and uh, that's Jupiter and Saturn. I'm gonna bring them into focus a little bit more. All right, so now they're in focus and I'm out of focus, but all that's illuminating me is the screen uh, that I'm watching every so often. And if I turn around this way, it's gonna be the screen and just the light at dusk. So, all right, I'm at 1 25th of a second, ISO 20,000 and F1.4. Built-in forgiveness is a wonderful luxury to have. We're in focus, because I've got it focused basically to the stars, or pretty close, I just kind of fudged it. Just got a faint glowing campfire. There's just a few flames there. And uh, put myself in focus. All right, so there's the glow of the campfire, the stars in the sky. Milky Way time lapses are also just so easy, even with tough settings like one frame per second. Faint satellites and stray meteors pierce the darkness with ease. I am just floored by how nice the day to night transitions are on this camera. 
I know this is likely something all Sony Alpha users are well aware of and used to, but this is brand new to me, and I'll be taking full advantage. In Big Ben's super dark sky, zodiacal light is annoyingly bright in person, and the A7S III captures this phenomenon beautifully. Total, utter darkness, and yet I can see the beach illuminated by starlight alone. And again, I should have used different settings here. Even still, there's detail above the noise floor that I can pull out if I want to. Now this is the part that really thrilled me. Astrophotography speedruns. This is Andromeda, after just 5 minutes of integration time. 10 seconds, ISO 20,000, and 35 sub-exposures stacked in DSS. In the past, I have taken hours-long images of Andromeda in order to get results this clean. A rather huge, surprise feature I discovered is that in live view and using the in-camera frame stacking, you can actually sometimes see the deep sky object you're wanting to photograph. This is fantastic for composing your image without taking lots of test shots, trial and error style. In contrast, the same settings and restrictions using the same telescope combination on my Canon 6D Mark II is just simply not as good. At ISO 20,000 and at the bottom of this camera's dynamic range, the color data is just pretty awful. But normally astro on this camera and gear combination would be done at ISO 3200 or 1600 with at least 10 times as much integration time and at least 3 minute long exposures. Bottom line is, I can do far more work in far less time using the A7S III thanks to its nearly magical low light performance. Unmodified or non-astro specific cameras are generally pretty bad at picking up hydrogen alpha emission nebula, which is at the very edge of human vision anyway. And the A7S III is no different here. But even with these speed run images, I'm still impressed I got as much as I did out of the North America Nebula, for example. By comparison, my modified T3i picks up this HA light like it's no one's business. A modified A7S III would probably kick some serious ass at HA, and I'm sure someone will be trying it soon. Or how about just five minutes of M45? I actually don't really have much to say other than just wow. I never thought I'd see the day that I could speed run astrophotography and take images of several targets in one night and still get results like this. I have plenty of more testing ideas that I can try in the future, but after seeing this I've really started to think about getting a second Sony A7S III. Ideally a modded one someday, but we'll see. Sony, would you be willing to make an astro modified hydrogen alpha sensitive version someday? Please. I cannot wait to try more stuff with this camera. In the next videos, you'll see more examples shortly. I can finally make more Constellation series videos the way I intended to all along. And I'm probably going to just nail sprite videos this spring. And maybe soon, some real-time Aurora? Fingers crossed travel restrictions get relaxed by the summer. Plus, there are dozens of other features of this camera that I'm only just now beginning to creatively understand how to work with. At any rate, I hope you're as excited as I am for the future content coming to this channel. And if you're interested in the Sony A7S III, hopefully this information Information was helpful in some way. Thanks for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss more cool content like you just saw. And until the next one, I'll see you out there.